so for our last type of naming system, we're going to no longer be looking at ionic compounds, which was a metal and a nonmetal, or a metal and a polyatomic ion, or a polyatomic ion and a nonmetal. It was some combination of metals, nonmetals, and polyatomic ions. Um, we're now going to look at covalent compounds. Now, some people also call them molecular compounds, so I put that word here just to be in your notes. Um, when we're talking about covalent compounds, we are not talking about ionic compounds. So that matters because a lot of things that we did for ionic compounds aren't going to apply here. So covalent, we are not talking about ionic compounds. And the first thing that's gonna matter if we're not dealing with ions, we're not dealing with charges. So there are no charges. You don't have to look up the charge of anything. And if there's no charges, there's no crisscrossing. So it's a little messy. It says no crisscrossing. Um, and there's also no reducing. So you might wonder, what is it we're doing? And the answer is not much. Um, where people get these wrong is they overcomplicate things. They try to do something that they're used to doing from ionic um, and mess it up, where in reality, there's really, really, really not much to do. Um, so how do we know if we're working with a covalent compound is a good first question. We are working with non-metals only. Remember that the non-metals are everything to the right of the staircase. Um, so we're only dealing with things to the right of the staircase. And even though a lot of our polyatomic ions are made up of non-metals, they are ions. We are not dealing with anything ionic here. So no polyatomic ions. If you see a polyatomic ion, it's an ionic compound. Um, and so I'm actually gonna teach you name to formula and formula to name in the same video because it is that straightforward if you don't overcomplicate it. Um, we're still going to do our basic naming where we um, name the first thing and name the second thing, changing the ending to I'd. But what we are gonna do instead of all of these things that we're not doing, what we are gonna do is we're gonna use prefixes. And they're Greek prefixes. So not Roman, but Greek. Um, use Greek prefixes. Um, prefixes are little things that come on the beginning of a word, like mono, di, tri. Um, so I'm gonna scroll down in a second and show you one through 10. You'll wanna pause it and jot those down. Those are something you're expected to know. Um, if ever you see a Greek prefix, you know we're working with a covalent compound. If ever you see only nonmetals, whether it's the formula or the name, it's only nonmetals, you also know it's a covalent compound. So here are your prefixes and the first couple examples that we'll do if you want to pause it. Um, in case you can't read my writing, it's mono, di, Mono, di, tri, tetra, penta, hexa, hepta, octa, nana, deca. A um, few examples. So right off the bat in this first example, it says diphosphorus pentoxide. One thing you might notice is that in pent, you see pent, but over here I have penta. Oftentimes all of these A's at the end, I'm not going to circle them all, but all those A's at the end, we often drop. Um, if it's before, like, if it's before another vowel, like the O in oxide. Um, I'm not crazy particular about that, but it's just something, if you're wondering why I said pentoxide rather than pentaoxide, that's why. Um, okay, so right off the bat, we know it's a covalent compound because I see di and pent, those are prefixes. Also, if I look on my periodic table, phosphorus and oxygen are on the right side of the staircase. Covalent compound, don't look at their charges, I don't care. Since it's a covalent compound, the prefixes tell me how many atoms. Let's actually go back in our notes there. The prefixes tell us how many atoms. So diphosphorus is telling me I have, if we look over here, di means two, I have two phosphoruses, P2. Pentoxide 
Pent is telling me I have five, five oxygens. That's it. No crisscrossing, no switching, no reducing, nothing. I just trusted the prefixes, made them the subscripts because those numbers down below, two and five, are what tell me how many atoms. Um, carbon dioxide is a good example. If you're ever like during a test and confused, I'm not sure, you probably know carbon dioxide is CO2. Now, the di makes sense, dioxide. You might be wondering why didn't we put any kind of prefix in front of the carbon, right? The first example had a prefix in front of phosphorus and in front of oxygen. Um, there's this weird other rule that mono, which is the prefix for one, is not used on the first word. Now, it would be used on the second word, otherwise I wouldn't have needed to give you that as a prefix. So if ever the first element listed only has a subscript of one, just like we don't write the one, we don't write the mono. However, on an example like CO, if I'm now gonna name it, I'm still gonna write carbon and oxide, the first word and the second word changing the ending to ide. But because they are both nonmetals, I need to go back and add prefixes. I look, there's only one carbon. I don't put mono on the first word. There's only one oxygen. I do put mono on the second word. So really this would be carbon monoxide, which you've also probably heard of. So I like these two examples, carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide. It shows you that mono does go on the second word when we, when we have one of that thing, but never goes on the first word. Um, and so you've now seen me go both directions. If there are prefixes, they become the subscripts. If there are subscripts, they become the prefixes other than mono for the first word. Um, I do use a prefix for the first word if it's any number other than one. So one more example before you go try. SF3, well, first of all, I need to say, okay, S and F, are we dealing with an ionic compound or a covalent compound? Since S and F are both non-metals, they're both to the right of the staircase. These are, this is a covalent compound, which means I don't care about charges. Just gonna write, using the subscripts, I have three sulfurs, so try sulfur. And for the first thing, I don't change its ending to ide. The second thing, I have six fluorines. Six is hexa. And fluorine, because it, only because it's the second word, becomes fluoride. Tri sulfur, hexa fluoride. No crisscrossing. You'll notice S3F6, you would think that's reducible, but we don't reduce here either. So charges, crisscrossing, reducing, all of that goes with ionic. Prefixes become subscripts, and subscripts become prefixes, and that's it for covalent. Okay, go try.